The breath at the beginning, the wind that carried the creative voice of God, the Spirit of God who hovered above the face of the deep, the gentle dove who at the dawn of time brooded over creation, causing all things to come into existence. To Joseph, he was a dream giver. To Moses, he was the fire from a bush calling for the deliverance of an oppressed nation. He's the precious oil that anointed priests, kings, and prophets. In Exodus, we see him inspiring the builders of the tabernacle. In Leviticus, he's the sovereign fire. In Numbers, he's the different spirit that separated men of faith from men of fear. Deuteronomy calls him the cloud by day and the fire by night. In Joshua, he's the Ruach of God's people, the breath that came forth upon shouts and trumpets, the sound that caused the walls to crumble, the spirit of breakthrough. He was the spirit upon the judges, the strength of Samson, and Ruth's oil of favor. In 1 Samuel, the spirit is the one who appoints, anoints, and removes. In 2 Samuel, he's revealed as the one who spoke through David and the one who now speaks through you. 1 Kings calls him the still small voice. He's hidden in 2 Kings as the pervasive oil that fills only what we surrender to him. In 1 Chronicles, he's the kindred spirit. 2 Chronicles reveals him as the fortifying spirit, the one who leads us to correct compromise and spiritual breaches. Ezra reveals his convicting power. He truly is the spirit of conviction, the only one able to draw the hearts of men toward repentance and Christ. In Nehemiah, the Holy Spirit is revealed as the comforter. To Esther, he was the voice of destiny. Job called him the life-giving spirit. He was Solomon's wisdom and David's favor. In Psalms, he is the spirit of worship. In Proverbs, he is the spirit of wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, we find him as the spirit of purpose or eternity in our hearts. His hiding nature is captured in the Song of Solomon. He is the hidden dove among the rocks. There, he is also the unquenchable fire and the alluring wind. Isaiah reveals him as the spirit who rested upon Jesus and who performs through you with that same power today. Jeremiah called him a fire in his bones one who ignited a passion for the Word of God. Lamentations reveals him as the one who grieves deeply over sin. In Ezekiel, he is a man of fire. And Ezekiel also shows us that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of oneness with God. In Daniel, he's the excellent spirit. In Hosea, he's the patient spirit. And in Joel, he's the promise of the Father. In Amos, he's the consuming fire the flames that devour our idols, our false perceptions of God. Through the prophetic words of Obadiah, it becomes apparent that the Holy Spirit fights for the ones he loves. He's the vindicating fire. In Jonah, he's the wind that redirects, the storm that protects the call, and your guide in the perfect will of God. He won't let you go too far. In Micah, he is shown to be stubborn as the unchanging spirit. He won't change his mind about what he's telling you to do, so you might as well obey his voice now. Nahum's words reveal him as the one who warns the sinfully stubborn of God's wrath. In Habakkuk, he's the spirit of righteous indignation. In Zephaniah, he is the spirit of hope. In Haggai, he's the enemy of fear. In Zechariah, he is the spirit of grace. He empowers us to do and become all that God desires. In Malachi, he's the refiner's fire who purifies us, our nature, our character, our heart. Matthew reveals him as the power behind the incarnation of Christ and the unstoppable power against the demonic forces of darkness. In Mark, he's the beloved spirit whom we should not even dare to blaspheme. In Luke, he's the threshing wind. In John, he's the secret to greater works. In Acts, he's the power of the church, and he's the mighty rushing wind. We can't build the church without him. In Romans, he's the one who loves Jesus, as well as your mighty intercessor. The Holy Spirit prays for you. 
In 1 Corinthians, He is the Spirit of God. In 2 Corinthians, He is the transforming Spirit. In Galatians, He is the Christ-like Spirit. In Ephesians, He is the sustaining power. In Philippians, He is the personal Spirit. He can be known as a friend. Colossians reveals Him as the Spirit of love. 1 Thessalonians describes Him as a fire that we should not stifle. We should allow Him to do His work. 2 Thessalonians tells us that He is the one who holds back the coming of the Antichrist. He holds back the motion of all end-time events until the preaching of the gospel is complete. When the Holy Spirit leaves, then chaos comes to the earth. In 1 Timothy, He's the prophetic spirit. In 2 Timothy, He's the spirit of peace. In Titus, He is the giver of new life. In Philemon, He is the spirit of forgiveness. Hebrews reveals that He is God. James, that He is the jealous Spirit. 1 Peter, that He is the Spirit of Jesus. 2 Peter, that He is the breath of the Scriptures. 1 John, that He is the witness of the Incarnation. 2 John, that He is the masterful teacher. And 3 John, that He is the Spirit of unity. In Jude, He is the power of prayer. And in Revelation, He is the one who reveals Jesus. And that same Spirit, that powerful and Holy Spirit, lives in you. He inspired poetic stanzas of worship in the heart of David the psalmist. He is the one who moved the prophets of old to declare the oracles and mysteries of God. He ignites the heart of the believer with a passionate love for Jesus, the very same love which caused the martyrs to lay down their lives. He is the generous giver of spiritual gifts, the sevenfold spirit and God's active force in the earth. He helps you to pray continually, live righteously, evangelize boldly, believe radically, worship sincerely, and walk powerfully. He is the Holy Spirit and He lives in you. I'm David Diga Hernandez and that is your Moment of Truth. For more free content like this, sign up to my emailing list. Just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash email.